Is my yogurt safe to eat? This is one of the main common questions that I see online. When someone is in the beginning stages of learning how to make yogurt, sometimes the results can be a little bit weird and you're not sure, did I actually do this right? So through my years of mastering yogurt, see here, these are the rules that I have developed to determine if your yogurt is safe to eat or not. So first, uh, what is the pH of your yogurt? If you're unsure if the yogurt that you've made is safe to eat or not, get yourself some pH strips to test what the acidity level of your yogurt is. So what is the ideal pH of yogurt? The pH of your yogurt should be at the most 4.6, but the lowest, which is more acidic, it should be at a 4.0. If your yogurt is at that pH range, using a pH strip to help, that would be the number one indicator that you do have safe yogurt to eat. Now, before I move on to rule number two, I would like to reinforce that if your technique, if you're not sure if you're doing it right, I would highly recommend checking out this video that I've made, which is really good on how to perfect your technique in making yogurt. Uh, I have had pretty much foolproof success with it, and you can see through the comment section that other people are finding that this is a fantastic way to also ensure having a very stable temperature when making yogurt to ensure its success every single time. This transitions beautifully into my next rule. Is your technique correct? If your technique is correct and your end product looks like yogurt, smells like yogurt, and tastes like yogurt, then you probably do have yogurt. But if you're watching this video, it's entirely possible that maybe the texture of your yogurt is probably not what you were aiming for, and so you're asking questions. It's probably because you have a textural problem that you'd like to uh, ask about. And so that probably means that your yogurt's probably too runny, or it's maybe ropey, or it is not the usual texture that you're expecting when you should be having yogurt. But if your yogurt is thin, ropey, or just not set, then you have done something wrong. What that means is, in general, either your inoculation yogurt is not correct, the amount of time that you have incubated for is not correct, or the temperature is not correct that you were incubating at. And so one of these variables needs to be corrected, and if that is the case, uh, I would say double check your work with a with my recipe, with my technique, watch my video, um, and then go from there. If your yogurt is runny or on scent, then usually that means that you are not following the correct incubation time and temperature ranges. And so for reference, the yogurt uh, temperature time and ranges is, uh, so you heat it up to 180 to pasteurize it, you cool it down to at least 115, and then you add in one teaspoon, not more, not less, one teaspoon of a previous batch of yogurt per liter of milk, and then you let that incubate in a warm environment, a stable warm environment, for three to six hours at a temperature range of 105 to 115. And then also check it at three hours to see where your incubation is at. If you are too hot, above 115, you're going to kill your microbes and your yogurt will not set. If it is too cold, then, you're, then your bacteria are going to be slow and they will not ferment fast enough and you will get runny yogurt full stop. And so these are the reasons as to why you would get runny yogurt and why you might be asking questions. There are a ton of videos uh, and a lot of blog posts uh, online of individuals having a hard time with their uh, yogurt maker and that's because the instructions in the yogurt maker are completely wrong. They're, I It baffles me at how wrong they are sometimes. And so please take that into consideration and please use my recommended temperature ranges. These are temperature ranges that are used by grandmas, uh, factories, so commercial products, and by people that actually have written fermentation books. And so when you go into these books, these are the precise temperature ranges that are always used and that have been uh, consistent throughout history. Uh, before finishing, there is one last thing that I do want to go over, which is my third rule of, uh, is my yogurt good to eat? And that is use your senses. 
uh, if it looks like yogurt, if it smells like yogurt, and if it tastes like yogurt, even if the texture is not quite yogurt, it probably is safe to eat. And so uh, I would say take a spoonful, put it in your mouth, see how it feels. If it feels good, then, then you're probably good. Test the pH, you know, do your due diligence. Be a critical thinker and experiment and learn about the yogurt that you are trying to make. Also, don't be discouraged. Fermentation can be very finicky. And if you do one mistake, the entire thing can be thrown off. So don't be discouraged. It took me, I would say, a good two to three months to really get my yogurt's fermentation down. And I was doing it as a side product, as a side project. And now it's something that I really enjoy doing and I have found that I'm really quite good at it. And so uh, this is me sharing my expertise with the world and hopefully you find value in what it is that I have uh, provided today. So if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. Please give me a subscribe. It tells YouTube that you like what it is that I'm doing and it can uh, help me as a creator. So thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next video. Bye.